SQL is becoming an essential skill for digital marketers and marketing analysts. In this video, I will share seven essential SQL commands or statements that you need to learn and master if you are dealing with marketing data. These SQL statements are also great for beginners to learn SQL. Throughout this video, I will be using Google Analytics 4 or GA4 data in BigQuery. If you are not familiar with how to send your GA4 data to BigQuery, then check out the link in the description of this video. Now let's take a look at these seven essential SQL commands or statements. The first statement that you want to learn and master is select statement. It is the most fundamental statement in SQL. You will be using it quite extensively. It allows you to select records from one or multiple tables. Let's go and see how this works. Here I'm in, here I'm in Google BigQuery. I'm already sending Google Analytics 4 data to my BigQuery project. In order to use select statement, you simply type in select in your query window, and then you write the list of column names that you want to select. I am going to select all the columns from a given table. So star means select all the columns. Then you write from, and then you write the name of the table that you want to select the data from. All your tables are listed under your projects. So here I have all my projects. If I expand any of these projects, then I can see all the data sets under that project. And within the data set, I have that list of tables. Google Analytics 4 sends the data in events table. So this is the one that I'm going to be using. Each day of data is stored in a separate table. That's why you're seeing 218 tables. So let's just pick one of them and write it here. So the way to do that is by enclosing the complete table name in single quotes. Complete table name starts with the name of the project followed by a dot and the name of the data set, then another dot and the table that I want to select the data from. And this is all you need. Once you construct this query, go ahead and run it. And here are all the results from this table. So you can see all the events with timestamp, which event is happening, etc. So that's how the select statement works. It lets you see the data from a given table or multiple tables. We'll look at the multiple table example later in this video. If your site gets a lot of traffic, and you only want to look at a sample of records, then you can use the next statement, which is the limit statement. Limit statement works in BigQuery to limit the number of records that are returned. If you look at this example, it shows you that there are 739 records. However, a lot of time, you just want to sample what's in the database. You don't want to look at every single record. In that scenario, the limit statement comes into play. Limit statement allows you to limit the number of records that are returned in your result cell. So in order to write a limit statement, you can use the same line or you can enter it on the next line. I am just going to use the next line. Limit, and then you write the number of records that you want to return. So let's say if I say limit two and run it, it's only going to return two records. As you can see here, there are only two records here. So that's how you use select and limit statements. Now, a lot of times you might want to limit and look at the records that match a specific criteria. This is where a where clause comes into play. So let's see how to write a where clause. Let's say I want to only look at all the records that have an event name of session start. So I don't want any other event names. I only want the records where the event name is session start. So in order to do that, I am going to remove limit because I don't want to limit it to only two records. And instead of that, I am going to write where, and then I give the column name. In this case, it's event name. And then within parentheses, I write the value that I want to limit it to. So I'm going to copy here and paste it here. So what I'm saying here is select all the columns from this table where event name is equal to session start. So that's all you need. Go ahead and click on run. 
and now you can see I have all the records where the event name is session start. Other events are not showing up here. This is a great way for you to isolate a particular Google Analytics 4 event that you want to narrow down to. You can use this on any column that you want. You can use a lot of conditions in where clause. This is where all the magic happens in SQL. So getting familiar with where clause and using it effectively will help you get the right data that you want to dig deeper into. Next SQL statement you should learn is count. That allows you to count the number of records matching your criteria. Using our previous example, let's say if I want to count how many records are there in my table where the event name is session start. That means I want to know how many sessions started in a given day. In that case, I will use a count statement. To look at number of session start events, I'm going to modify the statement that I already have here. Instead of selecting all the records matching this criteria, I am going to use a count statement here. And within parentheses, you give a list of columns that you want to use for this query. I'm just going to leave it as star, which means I don't care about the columns. All I want is count of all the records that meet this criteria. Once you're done, go ahead and click run. Here you have the number of records that meet that criteria. That means 176 sessions started on this particular day. Keep in mind, each table contains one day's worth of data. And that's what you're looking at here. So that's how you count number of records matching your criteria. As I mentioned before, you can create very complex criteria in your where statement. That's an advanced topic and won't be covered in this video. However, if you are interested in learning more, then check out the link in the description of this video. Next SQL statement that marketers and marketing analysts should focus on is sum. Sum allows you to sum the values in a given column. When Google Analytics 4 sends the data to BigQuery, it sends the e-commerce revenue data in one particular column. It also sends the information about each item in the transaction. So you get how many items were sold, what the total revenue for each item was, etc. You can use sum to find out the total value of the product sold in a given time frame. You can apply sum to any of the numeric columns to find the sum of the values contained in that column. Let's go and write some SQL and see how this works. Again, I'm going to modify the query that I've already written. We are going to be using the same BigQuery table that contains Google Analytics 4 data. So first, I am going to change the count to sum. Then instead of star, I am going to put the name of the column that I want to execute the sum on. So in this case, the column is called e-commerce purchase revenue. How do I know that? I know that because I'm familiar with the schema of Google Analytics for data in BigQuery. If you are not familiar with the schema, then check the link in the description of this video where I have explained the schema of Google Analytics for data in BigQuery. Next. I'm going to remove the where clause because we don't want to limit where the event name is session start. So I'm going to remove it here and that's all you need. Now go ahead and run it. And here you can see the total sum of the revenue. This takes all the columns that contain that value and returns the sum. So what this query does is it does a sum operation on all the values contained in e-commerce.purchase revenue column which is in this table and then returns the value. That's how you write the sum. This statement comes in handy as you are calculating the transaction value, calculating the lifetime value of the customers, etc. The next statement that you need to be familiar with is group by. Group by allows you to produce sum, count, etc. by a value in another column. So I'm going to write the statement and then explain it to you how it works. So here I am going to change this to count and back to star. However, I'm also going to add another column here called event name. 
So what I'm doing here is I'm selecting event name and then I'm also counting the records. Then this is where you say group by event name. This statement is going to roll up the count by event name. As a result, you will see each and every event and the total number of times that event was recorded. Let's go ahead and run it. Here you can see the number of times each of the Google Analytics 4 event was captured. So you have user engagement, session start, page view, etc. And here is the count of those events. So this is how you can see how many times a particular event is happening in a given time frame or matching a certain criteria. Here I used group by for count. You can use group by for sum as well. All you have to do is figure out the column that you want to sum on and put that instead of star and run your query. Finally, you should learn the SQL statement that allows you to join multiple tables and get the result set. This statement is called join. Let's see how this works. In this query, we have event name and the count of those events. However, as you'll notice, the event names are in lowercase with underscore. This is how Google Analytics 4 captures the data. So those same event names are being passed to BigQuery. What if we want to provide a better name for our reporting? Let's say we have a table called event names. This table does not exist by default when you send Google Analytics 4 data to BigQuery. I have manually created this table. The process of creating a table is beyond the scope of this video. But if you are interested, then check out Optizent Academy. The link is in the description of this video. To see what's in this table, we'll have to write a SQL statement. I've shown you the process of writing a SQL statement. There is an easier way to do that within this interface. So click on these three dots and click on Query. That opens up a new query window with everything written for you. All you have to do is put the column names. I am going to add star here and then click on run. Here you can see the data that's in this table. So what we are going to do is instead of using the event name, we will use event description. So we'll join this table to this query. And instead of event name, we will use description from event names table. So let's see how that's done. In this query, go ahead and enter a new line and type in join, then provide the name of the table that you want to join to, which is event names in this example. So I'm gonna copy this from here and then change the table name. So event names. So we are joining two tables, the data that's coming from Google Analytics with the event names table. Next, you have to specify the columns that you want to use to connect these two tables. We know that event name column in both the tables is the one that contains a common value. So we are going to use that to join these two tables. To join the tables, you write on. And then you specify the column from the first table followed by equal sign and the column from the second table. So here you have to use the fully qualified name of that column. That means you have to start with the project, data set, table name, and then column name. That's a lot of writing. So here's your bonus command or statement that you can use while writing SQL. SQL allows you to create aliases for tables and columns. That means rather than writing the full name, you can just use an alias. The way to create an alias is simply by adding that in front of the table or the column name. In this case, we'll assign an alias to the table. I'm going to call it GA4 table. And then I am going to call this table as E table. That's it. Now I can go here and specify GA4 table dot event name is equal to e table dot event name that's it rather than writing all these characters i've given an alias and i'm using an alias now we want to use event description instead of event name 
And here also we change it to description. So we are pulling the event description from the second table and then we are counting the total number of records. Now your statement is ready. Go ahead and click on run. And here you have the result set. You can see your session start, first visit, etc. The reason that you're seeing only four events here is that this code right here finds the matching records in both the tables. So event names table only has these four events in them. I created that as a dummy table for this example. If I had put all the events there, then you would see a bigger list. So keep that in mind. There is some advanced SQL that you can use to bring all the events, whether they have matching records in the other table or not. If you are interested in learning more, then check the description of this video for a link to a course where I go deeper into this subject. To recap, we covered seven essential SQL commands or statements that every digital marketer or marketing analyst should learn and master. I also gave you a bonus SQL command. So the commands that we covered were select. This is the most basic command that allows you to select the records from one or more tables. Limit, that allows you to limit the number of records that are returned in your result set. Where, this SQL command allows you to set a criteria to select the records from your tables. Count allows you to count the number of records in your result set. Sum allows you to calculate the total of all the values in a given column. Group by use with sum or count allows you to roll up the totals based on a value in another column. Join allows you to join multiple tables to get you the result set. And then finally, the bonus was use of alias in your SQL. This allows you to easily refer to the tables and the columns without writing the full table name or the column name. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and leave a comment for me letting me know your thoughts on this video. Also, don't forget to check out the description of this video for important links that I mentioned throughout this video. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.